So today we're going to talk about the future of NA Valorant and why if you are an esports fan of Valorant in NA that this well the year of 2023 might be a very very exciting time indeed and let me explain why because here we have the sheet made by Flynn of all of the you know roster moves and where everyone's going to be playing for all of the franchise teams and if we just look at the NA teams and we got four of the five up here Sentinels 100 Thieves Cloud9 and NRG we can see, you know, that most of the of for these four teams, it's pretty much confirmed. We know what their teams will look like for the most part. And that is going to be, you know, very interesting. And there's some really interesting teams in here that I'm sure, you know, many people will be excited to watch. You know, the average level of these teams seems incredibly high. Um, and then we're just waiting on EG as well to see exactly what their team will look like. There's still some question marks about exactly who will be on that team. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we know what these teams will look like in NA. And when it was first announced the only five NA teams would be in the America's League, I know a lot of NA fans were pretty angry at that, you know, that they thought that that wasn't enough, that NA had shown itself to be a pretty strong region overall in this game, and, you know, that wasn't enough spaces, you know, for NA players to, you know, get onto these teams. And, uh, you know, that might be a fair point, and that, I think, has played out, because, I mean, it's gone even further than that, because, you know, teams like Sentinels have signed Sassy and Pancada, two Brazilians, you know, NRG might sign Ardis. You know, uh, Def, you might even count as well overall. He is British. I know he's played in NA for a while now, but, you know, you could count him as well as kind of an import. And so, essentially, you know, that's not very many NA players. And now, there have been some that have left to go elsewhere. Obviously, Aaron and then, you know, players like Sire, you know, who are Korean, you may or may not count, depending, again, how you really see that. But it is very interesting that, you know, there isn't that many slots for NA players to be playing on these Tier 1 teams. For those of you who, you know, don't know or don't remember, basically what's going to happen in the tier two scene is there's going to be regional leagues. And you can see here in EMEA, you know, there's a ton of different leagues and in APAC, they have a ton of, you know, individual leagues as well for all the different countries and whatnot. But in NA, there's one league. There's only one league, NA, right? And that league is going to be an absolute bloodbath. And I'm going to explain it in just a, a little second as well, you know, just how crazy that is going to potentially look like. Um, because, you know, unlike all of the basically other areas in the world, NA, for whatever reason, has just, you know, I mean, lumped together. I guess it's just, you know, because there isn't too much of a difference between all the cultures and languages and whatnot. So they've just decided to put all their eggs into the NA basket. And I think that these might have slightly different rule sets as well on how they want to administer them. Because I would guess, based off this, that the NA League is probably going to have more teams in it uh, than, you know, a lot of the other, you know, leagues that exist. And so they might have to, you know, do it a bit differently in NA to everyone else, if there is a massive swell of teams, of course. But it's going to be very, very interesting indeed to see how this plays out. Because, yes, whilst for the players of NA, there isn't a lot of slots to get onto those uh, partner teams to begin with, what that's going to mean is that there's going to be an absolute swell of talent potentially in the Tier 2 scene. And if you are a fan of NA Valorant, the Tier 2 scene could be absolutely popping off. And it is rare. In esports, you know, there isn't many esports that have, you know, strong tier two scenes anywhere in the world. But this tier two NA Valorant scene might be stronger than anything else. And these Ascension games, by the way, remember, whoever wins, you know, their like individual regions, you know, championship for tier two, you know, they get promoted into the tier one league for two years. Those games are going to be the most important games in all of Valorant. Right, that is going to be more important than the World Championship Final. Those Ascension games to get into the top league. Think of the money involved. You know, the difference in money between making it and not for the org. The sponsors potentially involved as well, right? The stipends from Riot. Those games, in terms of like just a monetary value and, you know, what the orgs will care about most are going to mean more than any other game. So the pressure is going to be absolutely immense as well. And if we just take a look at some of the talent that might be in that Tier 2 NA League, it is insane. Because, I mean, Marv has not been, you know, signed with a team yet, apparently, you know, and he might end up in the Tier 2 scene, which is absolutely incredible and something that, you know, I don't think many people would have expected. But if he does... That is going to be absolutely absurd because, you know, 
he's one of the best players in the world and he might be in the tier two NA scene, right? You then go down the list. You've got Will from 100 Thieves. You've got pretty much all of the guard players minus Sire and their coach who potentially could be in there. You've got maybe all of FaZe as well could be in there. You've got the guys that drop were dropped from C9 like Mitch and Curry and whatnot. You've got all of Ghost Gaming potentially in there as well. You've got the NRG team that got dropped as well. Uh, you've got TSM, you've got Dark Ratio, you've got, you know, everyone on V1, but Celsius, you've got SR, you've got obviously the old Sentinel players as well. And we could just keep going and keep going, right? And there is just an absolute massive swell of talent in NA Valorant that potentially might not be in the partner league and instead is playing for tier two teams and there's only one league they might just be battling it out the entire year to try and get that ascension and it is going to be insane and the pressure is going to be high because there's going to be high expectations for the you know a team like the guard that's you know maybe sticking together or whatever uh, whether they do or not you know whoever picks them up they're going to have some very talented players the phase guys they're going to have very talented players you know all those teams i just mentioned are going to be super super talented rosters there's going to be some insane tier two na teams you know that could easily compete with the tier one teams right that if you if you take like the current phase roster and you just put them in a you know the tier one league you know you'd say yeah they they could compete right they'd be decent maybe not favorites but they could compete you know they, they wouldn't look out of place in that league and you could say that for a lot of these teams by the way in na that i think the level is so close that you could say yeah they could compete and they wouldn't look out of place but they're just going to be battling out in tier two it's going to be absurd. And again, for the players, you know, maybe it isn't the best thing. But as a fan of NA Valorant, if you are a fan of NA Valorant, it is going to be popping off in that Tier 2 league. You're going to have just constant games to be watching there, you know, with just a ton of players that you already know, right? There's going to be massive names in there, you know, like Shazam, like all of the guard guys, right? Like Marved, potentially, you know, Baby Bay, like... Just absolutely massive names in the scene. And maybe Shroud has even, you know, said that he might form a tier two team. Imagine, right? Like, just imagine the names that you could have potentially in tier two, any Valorant, all playing with a lot of pressure and potentially a lot of expectation as well to get them into that tier one league. It might be an absolute bloodbath and it might be a super entertaining watch overall, right? Just to constantly have like these tier two games that you can go to and just are, are absolute bangers from start to finish with some really talented players and some well-known names thrown in there as well. Like that could just lead to a situation where NA Valorant is just flourishing, right? And then you start adding in, you know, young talent that we don't even know about yet. Right, you start adding them into the scene that you know might not be old enough to compete in tier one Valorant or whatever. It, it could just be an absolute masterclass from right here. Just the way that things have shaken out, it could lead to honestly one of the best tier two scenes in all of esports ever. Because the amount of talent that's in this league, you know, the the what's at stake and what's on the line as well. You've got each player wanting to play to prove themselves as well. And you've got each org desperate to try and get into that, you know, franchise league. Everything could just be absolutely insane. And I think just the, the conditions that have been created right now for NA Valorant is just off the absolute charts. And I think if you are a fan of NA Valorant, then this is just a great time for you because 2023 could be just insanely, insanely fun to watch if you are a fan 